Hey there, guys. Welcome to a new Football Talks. It is uh, week uh, 16 now, and uh, I am joined by my other co-host. Oh, my God. Introduce yourself there, sir. Hey, it's me, Josh. What's going on, guys? We have a lot to talk about. There is some actual serious news we have to address before we get to the games, Bill. Oh, um, it, it starts in Carolina. Which one? I forget where Charlottesville is in. Or not Char Charlotte is in North Carolina. Or Charlotte, yeah, Charlotte, my bad. I, uh, so we got to go to Charlotte and discuss uh, good old owner. This time, it's not Jerry Jones that's in the spotlight among owners. No, sir, it's another. Jerry Richardson, the owner of the Panthers, the guy who's so cocky, he not only built a statue of himself outside the stadium, yes, that is true, go go over and see for yourself, but he also rehired that stupid GM who overpays veterans way too much for no good reason. It's that same man. He has been accused by multiple women, not only within the organization, but outside of sexual harassment and assault. And he is selling the team before the investigation has begun. Very bad signs for him. It's, to me, at least, it's, it's coming across of, yeah, he's basically admitting he's guilty. Yep. And next, we'll have a new owner come next year. But, Bill, what were you going to say? I was, uh, I was just going to say, yeah, it... it all signs are pointing in a negative direction for uh, Jerry Richardson. You just don't m miraculously decide to sell the team. What he's trying to do is he's trying to sell the team before the NFL takes the team away from him. Very, uh, very much in the in the uh, style of what the Clippers uh, in the NBA were going through a few years ago with the racist owner of the Clippers. Oh yeah, that guy can go to hell. But uh, anyway, Bill. So this guy is like he's basically take uh, giving giving up his status, like you said. And well, there there ha the investigation hasn't begun, but most women have been implying. A, well, I mean, you have to read the sources for yourself. But how do I put it? It feels like it feels like nothing we haven't heard before from other people. That doesn't. I'm not discrediting that, of course. This is still horrible. I am just. I I have this feeling because he's going to sell the team. He's going to get away with a lot of stuff. I mean, sure. The good thing is he's not going to have a team to constantly make him money anymore. But he's still going to get a big payday. I hope, at the very least, a lot of that money that's going from him. For, to him when he sells the team goes to those women because I mean, I'm pretty sure he's not going to serve jail time oh, these guys have t not. remember Bill when you have a lot of power you can get away with just about anything and for something like this that is not considered a big issue in, this, in society unfortunately I am pretty sure he's going to get away I mean you know he's He's obviously a billionaire, and, you know, they have the best attorneys on the planet. They're obviously, you know, they they can rig the system and uh, really make your life a miserable hell. So, As, If they settle it out of court, I'll have to just accept that, basically. Exactly. You know, I mean, it's, it, it's not surprising, to be honest. You know, I mean, look at this owner's club that... We currently have in the uh, NFL, and uh, <laughs> yeah. the sad, here's the other problem, Bill. This this just eschews everything for me again. Once again, I'm not sure on who should get worst organization, because you got the Browns who are well on their way to 0 and 16, and then they <laughs> fired Sashi Brown. You have the Cowboys because Jerry Jones is a self-centered prick and set and is just saying that these protests are without merit and they're dis they're dismantling our great nation. And then of course, we have Jerry Richardson who I feel like I think I have to give him that award when we and get I there. Mean, the, it's going to be a tough Giants, choice. The Giants are also in there, but I mean, to me to me if, if we if we look at it, it's got to be for me a a entire team organization failure 
and uh, there's only a few teams that really make that. To me, Browns. this is not on. This is not on you know Cam Newton or uh, Christian well, McCaffrey. Oh or yeah. Any of them. Yeah. That, I mean, that, let's be that, fair though. The Panthers aren't even out of my news site. They're not out of my my radar yet because you know, Bill, you had Cam with the. Uh, it's so funny to hearing a woman talk about routes right. comment earlier, which is bad enough. And then you consider the owner. But then, of course, Bill, there's the other thing I wanted to mention. Thomas Davis. You know who he is, right, Bill? Oh, yeah. Um, you know that bad, uh, the ugly hit he got on Devontae Adams, who I feel like Devontae Adams can't catch a break. People keep going for him. They keep going for dirty shots. There was the Bears player earlier in the year who did that. And hit him in the back of the head, and then you have now. I'm like, well, okay. Not just, it seems that Devonte Adams may have uh, very bad uh, brain problems in the future, the near future, possibly, at the rate he's going. But he got suspended for two games. Thomas Davis, I mean, and he disagrees with it. He's appealed it. I'm. I bet you it's going to get suspended down to one game, or it's going to be brought down. I feel like it is. He could. He could appeal it, and you know. Oh, he already has. I mean, and it could stand, and then if uh, and when they make the playoffs, then they could he could be missing a playoff game. So that's the risk he's running right now. He's running the risk of, you know, more than likely they're making the playoffs. You know, I mean, they have like a 95% chance of making the playoffs. Let's just put it that way. But, I mean, you're risking your team's playoff game on defense – for, you know, a dirty shot that you did do. I mean, that is a very selfish thing that you're doing right now to your team. And if they don't if they don't go down in punishment, you are in some major uh, that's a major issue. It's almost like uh, the Nadamakan Sioux uh incident a few years ago when Detroit was going into the playoffs and Sioux basically got away with the highway robbery and didn't get suspended for the playoff game. Yep. But uh, anyway, that's not where the story ends for me. The fun part comes in when uh, in inside of Twitter when uh, Philip DeFranco, a YouTuber who some people may know in the audience, uh, call that, called out Thomas Davis because Thomas Davis, uh, one player was... Um, let me make sure I get my source correctly. I for, I don't remember who it was. I want to say it was a retired player. I know there was a retired player in the conversation. But uh, let me check. Here it is. I found the tweet. So basically, um, so basically, Philip DeFranco uh, uh, spotted Thomas Davis in a con another conversation talking to um, another player about... Uh, ah, here it is. Talking to you about with, against Devontae Adams, or he, or Devontae Adams said, "I'll never understand it. Game is already dangerous enough, and we get Pro Bowl players out here head hunting and saying they didn't mean to harm me." Then Thomas Davis responds, "I understand your frustration. I do apologize for the hit, and no way was I trying to hurt you. My first instinct was to turn and make a block. In all sincerity, I do apologize. I truly respect you as a player, and I made a mistake." And Phil posts the video of that hit, saying, "Keep lying." And my favorite part comes after, where uh, Thomas Davis uh, blocks Phil Philly D, and uh, yeah, someone's in the denial stage, I think, of their grief. <laughs> oh man! But anyway, Bill, any other comments about the Panthers organization? Because right now they feel like a clown car again, even if they are going into the playoffs, most likely. I mean, overall, you know, from ownership, that's that's. Ownership is a clown car right now. Uh, they are very much being painted the way that they should be. Uh, you know, Thomas Davis. You know, he's getting he, he's getting his just desserts for the hit that he applied. I saw the video, and obviously, it did not look like he was looking to block. He put his shoulder into his into his face and hit I Devonte mean, Adams in the back of the head, not in the front. I, I mean, it's it's very much a vicious shot. It has no place in the game. Thomas Davis knows 
where is an acceptable strike zone and what is not an acceptable strike zone? The acceptable strike zone is in the chest. Hit him in the chest. If you're done, block someone, block him in the chest. Hit him in the shoulder. Turn, Knock him on his ass. You know, don't hit him in the face. That what, what is that going to do except knock the player out? So, obviously, I agree with the suspension. I'm on, I honestly don't know why he's... Uh, He's uh, uh, appealing it because it could be very easily upheld. And even if it, if it, if he gets to play this week, that means two weeks from now, it's this game and then a playoff game. And you're risking your team's entire playoff future for your own selfish uh, selfishness because you hit someone in the face. Yep. But uh, anyway, Bill. So... Um, let's move on to the actual games, Bill. Let's start with Saturday with Detroit hosting the Bears. This was perhaps the most complete game they've had, but again, it's against a bum team. Mitch Trubisky threw three interceptions. And, well, I felt like this game was a lot more of a defensive slugfest than the score might indicate a bit for the Lions because for a while there were good plays and then there was just some stagnation now and again. Right. I mean, overall, it was it was overall a very complete game. It was a very defensive game. I agree. Uh, you know, the Chicago Bears defense was on on Matthew Stafford for most of the game, uh, but he did just enough moving around in the pocket to buy himself enough time. So that way, he didn't get sacked. Uh, the run game was still non-existent. And I don't think they'll ever be existent until we actually get a big running back or we keep using Tion Green and forget about Amir Abdullah and um, and keep Theo Riddick in his pass-catching role. Tion Green is the best running back on the roster right now, minus Zach Zenner, who they don't seemingly put out there for no apparent reason. That's just me. Uh, you know... I would I would say Tion Green, Zach Zenner, and uh, Theo Riddick are the best. And I I'm sorry, Amir Abdullah has had a horrible year this year. But getting back to the game, you know, overall the Detroit defense came and showed up and you know played lights out against a, a good a good running back in Jordan Howard, a good uh, uh, improving Trubisky. Trubisky was uh, improving week upon week. We made him look bad. You know, he he was playing really decently, keeping the games close if they if they were in it. So, I mean, overall, the whole game was just a complete game. That's what we needed. This was a game Detroit had to have, and they didn't overlook their opponent for the first time. Yeah, I mean, I would say this would be more complete, but some special teams plays that should have went all the way. Like, Jamal Agnew did pretty good in the special teams department, mostly, but the problem was his best plays were called back by by flags. And flags, I think, are a uh, long-term issue for the Lions to fix. Well, I mean, we get flagged by every referee crew in the entire in the entire NFL. It's a, Even it, Ed Hockley? Really I mean, Ed Hockley, not so much, but, you know, the rest of the NFL, you know, the rest of the referees. I mean, if you look at uh, fan bases that always complain about uh, flags, it's Detroit, it's Oakland, because we have those reputations, you know, the Detroit because of the city and Oakland because of the team. You know, it's just we have those reputations. So we get a lot more flags and it just, it's a part of life around here with, uh, referees, but Ed hockey, crew did a good job. Uh, I, I honestly believe that that was a really the, probably the best called game of the entire year for the lions. Uh, you know, more power to Ed hockey. Uh, I mean, overall, nothing much to say, you know, Stafford. Had so, but, but, uh, day. My favorite play, though, was the cat, the deep ball to Marvin Jones. Oh, that, yes. 
That one was great. Also, uh, one there is something else to note, Bill. Guess who had a big game again? <laughs> Eric Ebron. He yeah, caught the second since, touchdown. Ever since uh, you know the fans were booing him at home, and he he lashed out at the fans, and they gave it back to him. You know, I mean, he's been playing good. Uh, he, I'm so I'm gonna keep saying it. You're. You, until you prove to me that you can put together a whole season, then talk to me about making the Pro Bowl. But, uh... Yeah, well, you know, at least the, he's not like Devontae Freeman, who says he should be the Super Bowl MVP if they won. Uh, bitch, uh, learn how to block Deontay Hightower instead of being a turnstile, and then you can come talk to me about Super Bowl MVP. And another little play from the Chicago Bears game, because... Really, the the Lions owned that game for the entire game. Uh, was the Golden Tate reception, which he broke the ankles of the Chicago oh yeah Bears he, defender. Yeah, but the funny thing is, he didn't do it like what DeAndre Hopkins would do: fake you out in one direction and go the other and make you break the ankles. This just broke his ankles when he was trying to catch the ball. It's like, oh, I can't hit him. I don't want to hit him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he legitimately almost did a dance move. On a freaking dance floor, and I mean, he did a dance. He did a bit of a spin. He did a bit of a, of a um, ice skating spin move when he went out of bounds. Right. But uh, that I I like. What Bill? It it was just a really good game to watch. Matt Prater. Matt Prater. What can we say? All he does is kick field goals. I am waiting for the big game by Kenny Galladay. I really need one from him at some point. Yeah, I, I mean, uh, one other thing I do want to say is really look at our team and look at all the rookies contributing. Galladay's been contributing. Tease Tabor's been contributing. Jared Davis is starting to learn his role, and he's going to be a beast. Teon I mean, Green. Teon Green. I mean, look at last year's draft with Zettel. I mean, da- uh, Bob Quinn is putting together a Patriots-esque dynasty around Matthew Stafford. That it's, offensive line needs to get to, get its shit together. That, uh, the, the issue has been the offensive line. That's one other thing I do want to mention. The offensive line was starting its ninth different configuration that week. Nine different configurations out of 15 or 14 games. So, you know, it's it's been rough sledding on the offensive line. If we can just get a healthy group for the entire year, that offensive line is going to be much better than what it is right now. Uh, so mark that in, uh, in the memory banks. Yeah. Anyway, Bill, let's move on. This one I just not much to talk about. The Houston Texans went into Jacksonville and got absolutely wiped. By the end, by toward by the end of the third quarter, all the starters were pulled. You didn't see Merciless or Merciless. You didn't see uh, Clowney. You didn't see uh, Dylan Cole. You didn't see Hopkins. It was over. The cow- the uh, Texans got absolutely shit stomped by the Jaguars. I think forty-five to seven. Blake yeah, Bortles is that. looking good now, and that is surprising. He's picked a good time. Although to be fair. He may succumb to the Derek Carr rule soon enough where uh, Derek Carr got paid the most amount of money up for a quarterback before Stafford said, hold my drink, and uh, he could fuck it up. I'm still waiting for that big Blake Bortles fuck up. I feel like he still hasn't shaked that off yet. I've, I need to see him do it. He got complete it all in the playoffs. Give me a complete playoff game, which he's going to show me. I expect it. I mean, the sad, the sad thing for Jags fans is while you did clinch the division because the Titans lost to the 49ers, I should have picked that game that way. <laughs> I didn't want to. I, I, I am now absolutely on this the uh, Jimmy G bandwagon. At um, c- but we'll talk about that later. But uh, b- with that loss and the Jaguars win, they have now won the division. So, goodbye uh, hopes for a Sunday Night Football Titans-Jaguars. I really wanted it to happen for pure irony reasons, but it will never happen now. It's going to probably be Falcons-Panthers for Week 17, which that should be a good game. I at least hope it is, but we'll see. 
But uh, anyway, Bill, I I really don't have much to say. This was just a po- piss poor game. They couldn't get first downs. They uh, TJ Yates could was running for his life. Hopkins got another touchdown though. He he torched AJ Boye and Jalen Ramsey when he needed to. But that's all that matters, really. That's the only positive. Hopkins scored a touchdown. Good for his record. I feel I will be uh, so angry if he doesn't get in the Pro Bowl. But then you have somebody like Dez get in, or someone like I know Devonte Adams is pretty good. But I feel like you're gonna tell me that Devonte Adams, it, as a normal wide receiver without quarterbacks being considered, is better than Hopkins? Bullshit. Well, I mean. To be fair, I don't think you have to worry about that based on that, uh, you know, uh, DeAndre's on the AFC side. So, you know, they went back to the old AFC-NFC thing. So, really, you know. He's uh, just got Antonio Brown, Juju. um, uh, Who else you got on the AFC side? AJ AJ Green. uh, Yeah. I guess uh, T.Y. Hilton. I you can't really put maybe Keenan Allen. Yeah, Keenan Allen is a definite. I mean Tyree Kill. Uh, yeah, you see, it's still a little stacked. Not as stacked as the NFC. That's because they lost their bet. The the uh, argue, arguable best wide receiver in o- Odell Beckham. But then you had um, what's his name? The former Panther, who's now a Saint, who's playing. Yeah. Ted Ginn Jr. is playing good, thanks to uh, good old Drew Brees. You have that Aguilar guy from the Eagles. Aguilar, yeah. Yeah. Uh, um, De- Michael Thomas from the Saints. Cole I Beasley. Mean, Cole Beasley um, Adam Thielen. Thielen. Marvin Thielen. Jones. Uh, Thielen's probably n- n- numero uno on the a- a- NFC. If, if Des Bryant beats out Adam Thielen for Pro Bowl, uh, you know, I there's something wrong there. Yep, I like and I want Hopkins to go in the AFC one, like, I, cause like I said, if you're gonna tell me that he's better, someone like uh, Devonta Adams is better. Like, did you forget? Guess who's throwing to him? <laughs> to me, the mat. To me, in determining a wide receiver is greatness. How do they do without when you don't factor in the great quarterback? I know you could say, but oh, but Josh Hopkins had Watson for a few games. Yeah, but guess what? What he's been doing this shit. He's been playing great even before Watson came running. He's been doing good with Savage, Osweiler, Hoyer, Mallet, Yates, Keenum. I miss Keenum, but yeah. Case Keenum, all he does is win games, but... Yeah, but they're like, no, we want Teddy Bridgewater for my narrative. No, fuck the narrative. Nothing against Bridgewater. But Keenum's not doing anything wrong. I'll I'll put put it this way. I would would start Case Keenum over Teddy Bridgewater. I, I don't know anything about his knee, but I mean... Just if you, the, I I fear they're the, gonna do the Brock Osweiler, Peyton Manning scenario. As soon as as soon as Keenum does one thing bad, like you throw an interception when you're down a few points, that's to them enough reason to put in Bridgewater. I I think that would be that that would sink their chances at at a Super Bowl. Yeah, legitimately, you know, you, I, I to me, and this is just. A Detroit fan looking at the Minnesota Vikings. The offense looks explosive with Case Keenum at quarterback. The offense does not look explosive with Teddy Bridgewater at quarterback. I'm sorry. I I like Teddy Bridgewater as a person. I I I give him major props from coming back from what he got, but he is not. He's not an explosive quarterback. He's not even ready, in my opinion. But uh, you know. But uh, uh, we 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 have ignored the Texans game because that's how bad it is. <laughs> so I I elect to shelf it already, and let's just move on to the best yep. game of the week by far. Yep. It's got I mean these two primetime games right here. We're gonna talk about both have controversy in them. But let's start with the throne of ease going to Heinz Field. And eat shit, Yinzers. The Steelers got cucked hard by the refs. 
Oh god, this game was insane. The first quarter was nuts, and the fourth quarter was just as much, if not even more. But Bill, the first in the first half, the game looked evenly matched until the Steelers broke out and got that last minute touchdown. And but the but then came the second half where they got they further cemented their lead, but the the Patriots never out with Tom Brady, chipped away with a couple field goals, and then took it to the house with a very important touchdown drive, with Gronk doing it all by himself. The the man beast himself just caught every football under the sun. He caught one basically on the blade uh, at the very tip of the blades of grass that's where that football was and Gronk a 6 7 tight end reaches way down to to catch that freaking football that just shows you how much he wants to win that game you know i mean that was a, a defining catch because it gives you momentum and he can start catching a lot of footballs and Pittsburgh's defense just got just got really tired at the end of that game. Yep, Tom Brady figured it out. Although to be fair, they got the first interception off of Tom Brady in 12 years. God, that for a that that's that record would be understandable if you're like an NFC team. But no, you play this. You play each other virtually every year. Right. In fact, it, it'd be harder to find a year where you didn't play each other. But right now, the Steelers are not in bad shape in terms of oh, are they done from the playoffs? No, they can still go. They're still playoff locks. And but <laughs> the thing is, if they lose another game and the Jaguars win out. The Jaguars may steal a bye week. Now, the thing would have been, the Jaguars would have rather the uh, Patriots lose because they could be in no matter what. But now, they could still steal it from the Steelers, but they still need the Steelers to fuck it up a little bit. Yep. I mean, but right now, it's, what, Bill? Yeah, I, I, it's just, you know, the game, that game, it, it, just playoff positioning, uh, just as a fan watching that game, just watching two Hall of Fame quarterbacks lead their teams in the last minute down the field was was a treat. I haven't seen it in a while. It sort of reminded me of the old uh, Manning versus Brady games. You know, uh, just a joy to watch two great quarterbacks. But Bill. Position. But Bill, I would say I wouldn't say Big Ben led it at the end of the game so much as Juju Smith. Juju Smith, oh, he got the juice. He, I don't know how nobody caught him early. Why? That was. I thought they were definitely gonna lose from that point. It's like no, you let Juju go all the way from you know from the line of scrimmage to the ten. You let him go about eighty yards or so. How you know? It, you know what it reminded me of actually, the Larry Fitzgerald catch in the wild in the divisional round against the Packers t uh, two years ago, and that to me was a treat. <laughs> that to me, that was the play of the game in a game where it was like a defensive slugfest, despite it being 2020 in overtime. Oh yeah, I agree. But this to me, I'll be right back. All right. All right, we're back. Uh, we're talking about Juju Smith, I believe, but to me, the big controversy. Here's where it came in. There was the catch to, I believe it was the tight end for the Steelers, and he turned around. But as he turned to cross the line, he dropped. He like he started losing control of the ball because not he, he didn't like get up. Here's the thing: if he got up and then lost control of the ball. That wouldn't have been a problem because remember, once the the ball crosses the line, and as long as you're still holding it properly, it's in no matter what. You could let it go right after, but once it crosses normally, it's fine. But the thing was, he was dragging his body through the floor, and as he was doing that, it started to to bobble. Right. And that is automatically considered a fumble, or at the very least, you haven't secured the ball. 
because the ball must be secured in order for it to be declared a catch or a recovery, depending on where, you, like, who's getting it. Right. See. And they blew the whistle right as he was losing control of the ball. So, they declared it to be a uh, incomplete pass. Yep. Now, for me, and and here's where I think that this is a bunch of crap and that it's an actual touchdown pass. And uh, now with a running back, running backs can hold the ball over the line and et cetera, et cetera. You know, as long as the ball breaks the plane, it's a touchdown. And no matter what happens, it, it it's all good. It's all good in the hood, right? Now, what is the difference between a running back and a wide receiver, except that they're catching the football? And I, I'm just of the belief system that if, if it's good for running backs, it should be good for wide receivers. He was going to the ground. The, he barely bobbled the football on the ground. The ground caused the bobbling of the football. I mean, it's at what point it is what is a catch and what is not. The the Des Bryant catch in the playoffs a couple years ago. The Kelvin Johnson thing where he puts the ball on the ground. Very similar play, the Kelvin Johnson catch to the Jesse James catch right there with the Pittsburgh Steelers. In a different way, albeit, but still very similar and very similarly called. It's it's dumb, in my opinion, that if you're going to count it as it's a touchdown uh, and he breaks the plane, it should be a touchdown. I, I, I'm just, it should be automatically a touchdown. And yeah. As for me, I'm on the other side. I think because he started losing control of the ball, it, if anything, I would have taken it a step further. <laughs> it's a fumble, and because nobody secu- had real control over the ball when, when they blew the whistle dead, it should have been a touchback, so Patriots win. I thought they were going to make it a no. touchback. <laughs> it didn't seem like he was fumbling the football or losing control as he crossed the goal line. Yeah. Hit the ground. Yeah. Um, that, that's why I'm not sure about this one either, but l- I, I will say, the play after, though, really dumb by Big Ben. Wh- on third and goal, I know you you couldn't spike it. Like, you couldn't, because what are you going to do, kick a field goal? you still be down. Or no, you just go to overtime, which I get it. That would might be the safer thing, but I get what they wanted to do. They don't want to go to overtime against Tom Brady. They saw what he did to the Falcons in the Super Bowl. And if he does that shit to you again, it's over. I get I mean, that, but if you know that you don't, if you want to take it home, you want to win this shit, don't fake spike on third and goal. You're not fooling the Patriots. You might fool the Browns, but you won't fool the Patriots. Right. They, they practice situations, and that's a situation that you practice. I mean, here's my issue, is you always throw the fade route to the corner of the end zone and if you don't get it you d- you kick the field goal it's not going to get popped most likely it's not going to get popped into the I- into the air and be interceptable it'll be out of bounds you either throw it over your receiver's head going out of bounds or you put it in a position where only he can catch it and if he doesn't catch it it goes out of bounds it, that why you throw that ball into the middle of the field where every defender in the entire game is located is beyond me. Yeah. It's, I mean, I don't don't know, man. This game was insane from, like, from the beginning. I wouldn't say all the way until the end, but just when the end came, oh, God. I mean, I'll be honest. I feel like the Patriots still could have won even at that time because they still had two timeouts left. 
Because as long as they had Gronk single covering, because they haven't learned anything, have they? They've played the Patriots so long, and they still think, oh, we could single cover Gronk. Uh, do you have Eric Berry? No. Do you have Earl Thomas? No. Then what the fuck are you thinking? I mean... If you single cover Gronk, the theory is is that you can cover everyone else, and you know. But Gronk's going to uh, is going to murder you if you. You if need you do that. double coverage and, for Gronk. And it and it was proven in the very end of the game. He was he was eating that he was eating his uh, defenders alive. You know, you double cover Gronk. I don't care what you do. You double cover that man. And hell, if you need to triple cover that man in the end of that game, you triple cover him. You don't allow Gronk to march them down the field to win it. Yeah, just have Gronk do it for you. But um, exactly. anyway, this game, in my opinion at least, should be game of the year, but it won't because you're going to say, oh, but the controversy. That's why we got to go Seahawks Texans. No. That's a game I would rather forget. <laughs> so uh, let me go with Patriots Steelers because that game was crazy. Not every game needs to be a shootout to be the most memorable ever. Even if uh, the mo the third my third favorite game of all time is the Broncos Cowboys Romo versus Manning. That was a classic. But hey, they lost that one, but I'm still ha I'm still happy with it because it was just insane. Right. Absolute disregard for defense. Like, defensive talent? What's that? Right, right. Anyway, let's move on to the final game. Let's move on to uh, the Dallas Cowboys, which this game was also not spared from the controversy train this week. There was a lot of crazy shit that happened this week, Bill. But we'll get to this one in a moment. This game was surprisingly more close. In fact, you might even say it could be a better game in some regards than the Steelers-Patriots game. Just because of how contested this game became. Because the Cowboys had the lead, then the Raiders kept taking the lead, but the Cowboys would tie, and then they won at the end of the game with the, with like, with the final drive with the game-winning field goal. Right. This was a, I don't know if I want to call it a defensive slugfest or inept offenses until they, until it really mattered. Right. What, 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 how I mean, would you say for this, Bill? I would, I would say it was pretty defensive. I mean, Khalil Mack was making presence felt all night. So I, I would say it was pretty defensive game. Khalil you know, Mack I mean, was just having a day. Yeah, he went off. Yeah, he he ate Dak Prescott, but I mean, let's be fair. The uh, Oakland Raiders line was not faring as well either. Yeah, I, I, I would I say it's sort of a it, it was sort of a combination of two things. It was good defense and inept offense. Yeah, but if it's good news for the Cowboys, you've actually won a couple games. You're still in pl the playoff hunt, but you need the Lions to lose. You need the you need the Falcons to lose. You need the Seahawks to lose, but good news for you, you can beat the Seahawks. Because you got them this week. You have the opportunity to at least control your destiny a little bit. Right. But, that's not the end of it. You also get Zeke back next week. Uh, so, guess what? Considering what the Seahawks, what happened to them, which I'll mention that later for Todd against Todd Gurley, there's hope for you, too. But um, anyway, Bill, to be honest, I kind of want to just get to the controversy of this game and go. Because, oh, God, Bill. Fourth and one. I'm setting it. I'm going to set this up. Fourth and one. Cowboys going for it. They, they, they absolutely need this to take the win if they, can have, if they want. And uh, Dak tries to run it in himself. And where they spot the ball, they got to bring out the, the chains. And... <sighs> Bill, you, you, you explain this part. They bring out the chains. They eyeball the the thing. And, and the refs doing something I've never seen before. Bring out a folded piece of paper and start measuring with that. Now, I've seen 
the 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 Thanksgiving coin flip because that was a Pittsburgh Detroit game. I've seen some really odd shit in the NFL before, but we're using a goddamn index card to see if the Dallas Cowboys obtained a fourth down, uh, a first down or not on a fourth down play. The the NFL, which has billions upon billions of dollars, we have an, a a chain crew, an old, an old and a postcard is how we're freaking settling if that's a first down or a fourth uh, or a turnover. We have a chain crew, an old man, and a freaking postcard and this is a multi-billion dollar company and we have 1890s technology determining if that's a first down or why can't they just get a camera put it on the ground and see that get multiple angles and be done get, with it get some freaking tracking devices in the football where the center of the football is and track the positioning of the football with technology. And there you go. Yeah. But, Bill, just, oh, man. I've never seen it. I feel bad for Raiders fans because this was that was so weird. The fact they had to bring up, the, like, they're going to hate paper because, Bill, Rock, rock uh, beats scissors and scissors beats paper. But paper beats the Raiders. Right. <laughs> That's just... Yeah. Yikes. Either way, man. Uh, that's. I think that's all I really wanted to talk about this game. I mean, I think... Well, I, I know Dez had a couple... Had a good play. But, um... There was, there was one last thing. And the Raiders could have still won this game. But Derek Carr... Ran the football, and he was reaching for the pylon to win the game with a game-winning touchdown run. And he let go of the football before it hits the pylon, and he fumbles the football through the end zone, and it's a touchback turnover to the Dallas Cowboys. They were within inches of losing that game and losing the playoff bid. Because of it. So, I, I don't think they're mathematically eliminated, but they need the Chargers and the Chiefs to tank. Yeah. The, the, but it's Oakland, unlikely. Oakland's in bad shape now. Yep. I mean, they're not mathematically eliminated. All they need to do are the Chargers to lose and then the uh, the Bills to not go 9-7. and seven. They And um, they have to win out. they got to beat the Eagles and the Chargers. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yep. We'll see about that. But anyway, Bill, that I think that should do it for ne for now for these for these four teams. But Bill, let's move on to the rest of the week because the rest of the week was <laughs> oh bad. So Bill, where do we begin? I mean, oh I know. Just chaos everywhere. I know. How about we start? In San Fran, in Santa Clara, because they're not really the San Francisco 49ers. In Santa Clara, you have the 49ers fr coming from behind to win again. This time beating the Titans, as well as knocking off the Titans, hope for the uh, for a division crown. And now they are they are scrounging for a play for some playoff semblance left. I, I think they're they are practically done. We'll see. But Bill, Jimmy G has got this team on a streak. Since oh, yeah. he has come in, they are undefeated. And I'm, I ask, what is better? What is more handsome right now? This streak, this winning streak, which feels like a mirage, a myth, like finding a unicorn for 49ers fans right now at this point in their lives, or Jimmy right. G's face? I'm going to go with Jimmy G because Jimmy, Jimmy G is great. Jimmy yeah. G could get with anyone he wants. He's one of those exactly. players. Even if you don't know who he is, his looks alone will win you over. I mean, 
he, he, he's he's one of those uh he's one of those backs that he's he he looks like one of those uh, backs that you know you, you you envision what a quarterback looks like, and he's he's like the face you would picture. Yep. But Bill, <laughs> now I mean the team's done. They're not going in the playoffs any at all. But right now this team looks still looking good. The thing is. They have two games left against the Jaguars that they host, and then they go to the Rams. They could win one of those games and end it, end the season on five and eleven, which is at least two times better than where they were last year. I I think that would be optimistic because uh, you know the Rams are going to be playing to try to get a one seed or a two seed at least. And I don't uh, think so I don't think it's going to happen, especially if the Eagles win one more game. I don't think it's going to happen, but you just never know what's going to happen with the Eagles without uh, without uh, Carson Wentz. Uh, you know, overall, you know, good lord, the the 49ers, they're very much they're very much set up for the future. You need to resign Garoppolo. I mean, he's going to make a lot of money. Oh yeah, they have uh, a lot of money anyway. But- yeah, I, I, he's the he's the quarterback of the future, and if you really if you really see how he plays, he plays very much like Tom Brady. He's very calm, very much uh, you know spreading the football around. So he's learned a lot. He's been sitting there learning a lot. He that that might be a very bad idea for the Patriots in the end, uh, trading him away. Yeah, we'll see. But um, anyway, as for the um, as as for well, I remember I used to say I wanted Kirk Cousins in San Fran, but now I have an epiphany. I have five places he could go. I've said Denver before, but then I'm gonna throw a couple other ones out that I've said to you, Bill. But now I'm gonna say on the podcast, we have, I have the Jets. That can happen. Um. Uh, there's the, uh, who else, uh, the, the Dolphins? Uh, I would say that that's probably a little bit less possible just because of Tannehill, but I can see, I can see the point. Um, Buffalo, because they don't know what to do with Tyrod Taylor. I, I think he would be a little bit of an upgrade. I mean, I like Tyrod Taylor. I, I think he's been given a I th- I'm like, raw deal. Yeah, I like Kirk more because he does more with less. Yeah. He's been doing more with less somehow. And then, of course, the fifth place, my fa- my surprise, the Giants. Yep. Uh, it would not surprise me either because if they if they get rid of Eli Manning, I mean, and that's very possible, uh, possibly a thing because Eli Manning uh, was treated poorly by the Giants organization. No, I, especially McAdoo. McAdoo. McAdoo's a horrible coach. He's a horrible head coach. Uh, just, ugh. We can build from within. Yeah, my well, ass. Sometimes, sometimes you don't need to hire from within to to win. Just look at the Lions organization. We kept hiring from within forever, and had GMs from within, and all these other people. And then Martha Ford went through and fired everybody. And now look at our team. We've had back to back winning years. Uh, so obviously hiring within is nice and good. If you want stability, but sometimes you need to rock the boat as well. Yeah. Anyway, Bill, my next my next spot or my next team I want to talk about is um good <laughs> let's go to Seattle, Bill. Oh man, this was what I wanted to mention. The Rams sent the Seahawks to the Shadow Realm. Absolute destruction, a nightmare for the twelves, because the twelves are at risk. Of not having a postseason to talk about for once. Yeah, I mean, the Rams showed up and they, they absolutely. Todd Gurley, Pro Bowl. I'm enough. Don't at me. 
Todd Gurley to the Pro Bowl. Don't even at me because he is he absolutely owned all of them. And I will say, I think we can we're getting closer and closer to saying the Legion of Boom era is over. I I'm 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 on that bandwagon as well now. I think I think that I think they're gonna blow that up. Yep, it was fun while it lasted. I mean, obviously, you want to keep, uh, of everyone you want to keep Thomas. That that's that, there's a that's a no brain. Uh, who? Or the, one of their safeties. Oh, Earl, the, the safety. Earl Thomas. Yeah, Earl Thomas. Yeah. I hope I kind of wish we could take Richard Sherman off their hands. I thought I said Earl Thomas. Did I? Did I not say Earl Thomas? No, I didn't. It didn't show up. I didn't hear it. Oh. You didn't even hear it. Okay. Yeah. Anyway, the Rams just spanked the Seahawks. The Seahawks are at risk. And yeah, Todd Gurley for an Offensive Player of the Year, for, in my opinion. He's up there with Adam Thielen. And um, I mean, who else? I feel like I'm missing somebody else from the from the offensive side, but oh well. On the NFC, I mean, I can't really see anyone right now. Carson Wentz. Bennett, but he's he's gonna get MVP regardless. I think he's already won it. Oh yeah, I mean, Drew Brees, you could make a case for. Yeah, but you know they like to give it to you know, a new guy. Kamara. They want to give it to a Kamara. new guy. Kamara's getting Rookie I mean, of the Year, possibly. Yeah. Him or Juju Smith. Those two are gonna be close. I think. I want to give it to Juju, but I feel like Kamara's just been more consistent. But Juju Smith is still an absolutely fun player to to watch at his, and to listen to. He's fun. But anyway, Bill, uh, I think those are the only games I want to mention. But, um... Right? <laughs> all right, Bill. So with that in mind, are you ready for the picks? Indeed. Here we go. Week 16. It is a Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Uh, slate of games in the Saturday game, uh, the afternoon game, the Indianapolis Colts at the Baltimore Ravens. The Ravens are going to win and punch their ticket to the playoffs. I mean, I think they've already been in, but now the Ravens, they are actually still in contention for the division, but I just don't see it happening. I also got the Ravens winning. Uh, they're done run all over the Colts. Uh, Colts are in going to fire Chuck Pagano. They should have done so a long time ago. <laughs> Next up, the Saturday night game on NBC, the Minnesota Vikings at the Green Bay Packers. Of course, this one's on NBC, not the Lions game. It's like, oh, but the Lions don't bring us ratings, but the Packers do. <laughs> I'm going to go with Minnesota, take care of business, and yeah, Say good night, Aaron Rodgers. I mean, he's practically out already. They could still try, but I think they're virtually eliminated. It's very, very slim chances for them to get in. Like they need so many teams well, to tank. They needed Atlanta to lose uh, last week, so they're they're out. Uh, so I've got Minnesota. I I don't think that they'll play Aaron Rodgers the entire game. Uh, I think it's foolhardy to risk his health to. Uh, play a really stingy defense like this. Yeah, the, the defense oh, that them. injured him in the first place. Yep. Alright, Sunday games on Christmas Eve. The Detroit Lions at the Cincinnati Bengals. Everyone's setting up, getting their last minute shopping out of the way, Bill. You have people uh, also preparing the presents, wrapping, gift wrapping them and all that. And putting them under the tree. Because the Lions are going to give the city of Detroit a win and still keep the playoff hopes alive. I've got my Lions as well. They need this game. The Bengals are in disarray. They need it badly. I have them winning. All right. So next up is the Miami Dolphins at... The Kansas City Chiefs. Oh, yeah, I forgot to mention, there's the whole Bengals situation with, uh, what's his name? The coach, yeah, with, like, with the coach saying that he's going to resign. And <laughs> that comes out of left field. I was like, what? It's like, I'm surprised, too. I thought they were going to sign him for five more years again. <laughs> 
Anyway, for this game, I have the Chiefs wiping out the Dolphins, knocking them out of playoff contention. I, I, I think this could be a shootout. I have uh, the Kansas City Chiefs winning this game. They seem to have their mojo back a little bit. so no, Still waiting for Mahomes. Oh, yeah. Hey, if uh, anyone could make him come out, it's Nadonik and Sue stepping on Alex Smith's arm or something. <laughs> you never know. Uh, next up, the Buffalo Bills at the New England Patriots. Okay, Buffalo, you had your chance a couple weeks ago, and you're you're done. You're done. The Patriots are going to remind you why. Oh yeah, th by the way, fun story. There was this salty Buffalo news uh, uh, reporter who was talking about how, say how the NFL. Uh, he was mad, saying that this was a horribly officiated game against the Steelers, and it's always biased towards the Patriots. Bitch, please. The Steelers have a lot of trouble with the Patriots just as much as you do. Unless you're the Giants or the Ravens, you can't really bitch at the Patriots because they keep beating your ass because you can't, you're not good enough. Unless you're Baltimore or New York, you're just not good enough. So I am especially hard on this game. This one, if I could make a lock of the week, this would be it. Why? Because fuck Buffalo, fuck Buffalo reporters for being salty journos who can't admit that their team sucks. And see, I, I'm not I'm not a pick New England. I think they've uh, they just got the offense to uh, combat a really bad Bills defense. Next up, the Cleveland Browns at the Chicago Bears. Okay, okay. Let's be real here, Bill. The Browns are. This is also another game they have a bit of a chance to win. But I think I want to say Mitch Trubisky should outperform Deshaun Kaiser. I know he threw three picks, but this is the Browns. And please, Jordan Howard, rush for 200 yards on this team. This is the Cleveland Browns' last chance. The last gasp before they are now deemed the worst team in the history of football. And my Lions are never again associated with being the only 0-16 team. I have the Chicago Bears running all over the Browns. Oh, I hope so. And you got to hope next week the Steelers don't bench all their players and start. I forget who the name of the guy was for the, uh, well, the backup the, quarterback the for the Steelers. Want, the one, the one, the one seed. Uh, so, uh, but next up, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers at the Carolina Panthers. The Bucks are playing spoiler at this point, but I'm going to go with the Panthers. Should shit stomp them and secure a spot in the playoffs. I got Carolina also winning. Uh, Tampa Bay is playing a little bit more spirited, but uh, Carolina's just got too much. Next up, probably the best of the entire 1 o'clock slate, the Atlanta Falcons at the New Orleans Saints. I'm amazed they didn't bring this one down. This is a good game. I'm going to go with the Saints. They're going to take down the Falcons and really make them uh, slip their hopes away because, Bill, the Falcons need to get 10-6 and six and they should be in. I got the Saints as well. I need the Falcons to lose. I need them to lose both. I need the Lions to win both. Uh, so here's my pick against the Falcons. I, I got the Saints. Kamara's, I have a big day. Next up, the Denver Broncos at the Washington football team. All right, so I'm going to go with Washington. More so because I trust Kirk Cousins over Brock Osweiler. I know Brock Osweiler played absolutely insane against the Colts, but... I feel like the, the that Washington should be prepared for him. And I've got Denver uh, just because I, I both both teams really don't impress me. I just it's almost a coin flip. Next up, the Los Angeles Rams at the Tennessee Titans. I'm gonna go with I'm gonna go with the L.A. Rams. I feel like they are abs. Todd Gurley is going to run past everybody. Show He's going to show uh, Malarkey, Mike Malarkey, the true exotic smash mouth. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, Goff and 
uh, freaking uh, Gurley, uh, the two OGs, as I call them, are going to freaking smash the Titans. Uh, next up, the LA Chargers at the New York Jets. You can still make the run, Sandy or LA. You can still do it. Why? Because the Titans fucked up. You can still do it. Make the run. Get 20 fans in a postseason game. I believe in you. I've got the Chargers as well. Uh, Jets are done without McCown. All right, the 4 o'clock games. The Jacksonville Jaguars at the San Francisco 49ers. What's that, Bill? Do you smell that? Do you smell what uh -oh. The Rock is cooking? The Rock is cooking an upset of the week. I've got oh, San Fran taking a win from Jacksonville, and Jacksonville doesn't even need to bother with it. They're not getting a bye week right now. I've got the Jags winning. Or, not the Jags. i got the 49ers winning. Jimmy G winning in overtime. And I... I, I would like to get on the 49ers hype, but I just can't do it. That defense is too good. I got to go the Jaguars. Uh, they, they're they they're smelling blood in the water for the number one and the number two seed. They're going to keep, they're going to stay hungry. Next up, it's the Seattle Seahawks at the Dallas Cowboys. I'm going to go with Dallas. They got Zeke back and last time I checked, the Rams or the Rams showed that you could just run all over the Seahawks front seven and there you go. Right. I won't lie, I've changed my pick on this like four different times and I just changed it again. I'm going with Dallas Cowboys. Uh, I just trust Ezekiel Elliott just more than... Let's see if his training has paid off. Is he going to come back like... Uh, Luke Skywalker in Return of the Jedi, a strong Jedi, or is he going to be just some regular schmuck like uh, like any other running back right now? I hope his training has proven worthwhile. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, so the next game is the New York Giants at the Arizona Cardinals. I'm going to go with Arizona. The desert will be slow, soaked in the blood of the Giants. Eli Manning's uh, uh, departure is feeling more and more inevitable. I, I think it's a, a Giants game, a Giants sort of game to win. And every, I think this is one of those games where everyone's asleep on the Giants and the Giants are to win. I, I got the Giants. Uh, so the Christmas Day games, uh, the 4:30 game, the Pittsburgh Steelers at the Houston Texans. At this point, Bill, I've got nothing left. I have nothing to win. I'm gonna go with Houston. <laughs> Why? The Steelers are gonna play to the level of their opponent once again, and I feel like DeAndre Hopkins is going to win this game all by himself. And I've got the Steelers. I just. You know, I, I, the Houston Texans can't cover anyone in their quarterback situation. And there's one uh, thing to note, Bill. Antonio Brown is out for the rest of the season until the playoffs. And even then, that's a question mark. So, I don't want to hear Martavis Bryant say, Oh, why don't you give me the ball? Antonio Brown's gone. You're going to be fed. So don't so stop your bitching. So is Juju as well. He's out. No, no, with uh, Antonio Brown out. Yeah, yeah. Smith Schuster is going to get all the freaking look. Yeah, so, like, I don't want to hear Martavis Bryant bitch because you saw the game he had there last, game, last week. But, of course, you had him and Big Ben. Big Ben was blaming other people for that loss, for the pick he threw. It's like, it's not my fault. It's the ref's fault. <laughs> okay, Big Ben, chill, chill. I'll, I'm gonna go find the quote while you give me, read out the next game, Bill. And then the 8:30 game on ESPN. It is the Oakland Raiders in must-win mode at the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm gonna go with Philadelphia. I feel like the Raiders lost their chance against Dallas. And uh, yikes. Yeah. I agree. I've got uh, Philadelphia. Uh, winning that game. 
Well, Bill, there's no, there are no more Thursday, Saturday, or Monday night games, so we don't have to preview next week. All you need to know is that it's oh. going to be exciting, right, Bill? Break, uh, just breaking news, breaking news. Uh oh. Packers place quarterback Aaron Rodgers on IR is done for the year. Oh, go oh boy. Yeah, that there you go. You got it. Hey, Bill, you called it before the podcast before before it appeared on the podcast. Or whatever. Yep. You called it earlier say they were going to put they're going to bench him perhaps. But now, okay, Bill. Now it feels like to me the Lions game they absolutely cannot choke to the Bengals because I was thinking, uh, there's a chance they could choke to Aaron Rodgers in week 17. But no, it's all good now. The Panthers did work. They, they, I think they demoralized Aaron Rodgers so bad with those three interceptions. Also, I found the quote, by the way, from for about Big Ben. Ben said he wanted to spike the ball in the last play, but the call came from the sideline not to. He blamed his coaching staff for telling him not to, or saying to spike the ball. Bro, don't. But. Okay, guy. Okay, man. Keep blaming everybody but yourself. You threw that interception. Nobody did. In fact, it was tipped in the air by a Patriots player. So don't tell me, oh, it was my other player's fault. No, he didn't even hold on to the ball. He didn't touch it. Right. Anyway, that'll do it for this week. We'll see you guys in week 17, the regular season finale.